It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And I am very, very excited to be back out here this morning evaluating McClam. Uh, this shell was given to me by a follower, I want to say 10 years ago. I think it's been about 10 years. It's real. It is really, really heavy too. And it sits right by my front door in my front courtyard. And it's the middle of July. It's, uh, it's pretty warm right now. And this, this shell will be in sun until about two o'clock in the afternoon, at which point the sun will move on. So it does get hammered for a couple of hours in the hottest part of the season. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to talk with you about what's going on here, what's working, what's struggling. You know, it's so important in gardening and in life to try your very, very best to get ahead of stuff. So, you know, when we go over this together and look at this, we're going to determine if I need to change out any plants, maybe put if things that I have in here are special and I don't want to lose them to sunburn in the summer. Uh, do I want to move them to a shadier spot in the garden? Do I want to, since this is a container, do I want to schlup it into the shade for the summer? My goal is to try to find plants that will tolerate and thrive in the hotter conditions because I don't want to be moving stuff around all the time. So that's always been my goal. And this has been through many iterations, as you know. I think probably the biggest surprise of all in this shell are these tillandsia or air plants. I don't know why they're alive. Um, I did lose one. One just died um, and I had to pitch it. Uh, but, you know, I'm I'm going to watch these and let them ride and, and see what happens. But um, currently they, they have rooted in to the soil gently and appear to be thriving. The elephant in the room, in my opinion, would be this little aloe dorothea. This was popped in here as a cutting. It has rooted. So what's going to happen um, as it establishes more of a root system, you know, I'm really good about watering my plants when they need it. So it's gonna green up a bit, probably, by the time we readdress this shell later in the year. If this turns green, I will dig it up, cut off the roots, and reset it. Many of you have been asking me how to, keep, how to get your plants to color up. You, you tell me that you go to the nursery or the garden center and you buy um, succulents that are these beautiful colors, you get them home and they immediately turn green. It's not you. Um, remember where these plants came from. They came from very controlled conditions at the grower. And when conditions are optimum for a plant, they will give you their best. If they're not optimum, they won't. So for us as succulent lovers, designers, and collectors, optimum is between good health and high stress. You know, we don't want to we don't want to stress our plants to the point where they are susceptible to pests and disease or they finally give up and kill themselves, but we want to provide just enough stress like this to keep them interesting. So, if your plants are reverting to green, it's likely that you aren't able to provide them with the amount of sun that they need. Um, maybe the temperatures are too humid. Maybe you don't have enough variation in your daytime and nighttime temps. It's just really important to experiment and to be willing to make mistakes because we don't learn anything when we're getting it right. So experiment with moving plants around your garden, putting them in the ground, taking them out of the ground, putting them in a pot, experimenting with soil, experimenting with, um, with exposure. But do not experiment with water. Less is always more with succulents. We don't water our succulents unless the soil is completely dry. Okay, so let's make that clear. But you can move them around to sun, to shade, to partial sun, to morning sun, to afternoon sun, to afternoon shade. But feel free. Move them every day until you find their happy place. Um, another spectacular plant in this arrangement that is very, very new to me and that I am hoping you all will share your experiences with in the comments is the Athona 
capensis, sometimes called little pickles or ruby necklace. Check her out, you guys. Isn't that so gorgeous? Now, this plant is stressed in here in the way that I talked about that's so great. See how it's starting to turn purple? And the stems are purple. You know, even the leaves are starting to, you know, the newer leaves are, are purple. That's stress, but not to the, to the point where, you know, she's dying. She is absolutely thriving. What I'm pulling off right now are little spent blooms. This South African native is summer, semi-dormant, depending on conditions, can go fully dormant, but it puts out really cute little yellow daisy-like flowers in the late winter and early spring. So, you know, that's another tip for you. If you're not sure when your plant's dormant, chances are good it's going to be in that window of time uh, when it's not blooming. That's a good indicator of at least semi-dormancy in a plant. And when a plant is dormant is when you want to fiddle with it the least. You don't want to give it too much water. You don't tr want to try to work with it as a cutting. Uh, you just kind of want to let it, let it hibernate like a bear in the woods. Okay, so if you have experience with this Athona capensis, um, in the comments, if you could tell me what your zone is and you know how you care for this plant. I was super inspired. One of my followers in Florida, South Florida, sent me some photos on Instagram at Laura Love Succulents. I love your photos. Thanks for sharing so many. Um, of her three-tiered succulent fountain that was dripping with Athona capensis, dripping with it. So that, in, that, I mean, that was very, very encouraging that a hostile climate like Florida, this plant, which is so delicate and so pretty and so clearly succulent, uh, can thrive in that zone. So let me know your your experience with it. Okay, so the Athona loves the clamshell. The clamshell does not have any drainage. Um, you know, it's on a great downslope, so when it, you know, and we don't get any rain, so I don't, you know, I'm not concerned about that. But when I do water it, the water tends to kind of spill out the side here. Um, I've never lost a plant in here to rot, so the fact that it doesn't have drainage isn't of too great concern to me. But, you know, now, like I said, it's summer. It's time to evaluate what looks good, what doesn't. Is there anything that I want to move? I've got a couple of Echeveria snowballs, Mexican snowballs in here. I told you about this fantastic plant. I got it. Our son and daughter-in-law and grandbaby Lucy just bought their first home in Claremont with an E up in L.A. And he, the people they bought the house from had quite a few succulents. They're what I call random collectors or passive collectors, the people that had the home before my son and daughter-in-law. Um, they just had some random things that they left behind, you know, in pots. And this Echeveria Mexican Snowball was one of the things that they left. And it was in a big plastic bowl and there must have been 20 rosettes and my son said oh sure you can have it because this is a plant that I can't fi ever find here in San Diego so I broke that all up for parts and I put these Mexican snowballs everywhere in my yard I love it I'm really really hoping that it will thrive and give me lots of babies and because every time I look at it I think of my son and my daughter-in-law and my baby grandbaby Lucy and it just makes me so happy um so far, so good. This has been, the snowball has been a super tough plant. Oh my goodness, look, here's one I just barely pulled on. Um, I had set it back here at the back end of the clam and it wasn't actually making contact with any soil. So it's looking for soil. These roots, look at that. They're, they're reaching out and I, I will make sure that it makes contact when I put it back. But now's the time to pull off the spent understory leaves. This is normal, your plant's not dying. Just, you know, just like how your, how your body sheds skin, um, succulents will, will shed older leaves in this way. Not a big deal. Just go ahead and remove them. I'm removing them. I don't wanna make 
a comfortable place for insects to hide. And aesthetically, I just like the look of a clean plant. However, those dead leaves do serve a purpose. They provide some protection from sun and heat and help retain moisture. So the, you know, the, the spent leaves on a plant can and sometimes do serve a purpose. Okay, so since that's come out, I'm gonna go under here, feel around. Yep, I can feel there's some more detritus, like squeezing a blackhead, I'm telling you. Oh, that feels amazing. Okay, so in this little area right here where these Mexican snowballs are residing so happily, there is a little cleanup to do. Just take care of that. Awesome. And that capensis is, it's starting to weave its way through this arrangement. And I have a feeling that left to run amok, it will take over. So next time we go over this shell together, I might want to make some judicial cuts on this. I have not propagated this plant yet because it is new to me, but I'm assuming much like string of pearls, you guys have taught me. The idea isn't to take take a piece like that and stick it in the dirt like that and hope for the best. The idea is to take the strand and lay it on dry soil like that so that the plant will have an opportunity to root along the stem line. That's the way to propagate a plant that spills like Athona and Raulianus Senecio. Okay, so let that lesson over. All right, what else have we got here? Ugh. So there's another little snowball right here, thriving. These are such plump, juicy leaved plants. So even though it's kind of hot, it's doing a magnificent job of supporting itself with the moisture and food supply that it has in its leaves and trunk. You know, here's a little sedum couple of little sedums here that are a little in need of grooming and this little aloe little leaf is spent there yeah the little aloes aloes are super tough I don't think you can go wrong planting an aloe in um, an arrangement like this in the full sun they're just going to color up and be fantastic particularly if you don't overwater. the cotyledons look spectacular and here's another little, oh my gosh, that poor little snowball that I stuck in that didn't make contact with soil. Tuck that back in tighter so that it will make some contact with soil. Poor little guy, sorry. All right, now check out this little Crassula ovata. I stuck this in here as a cutting last time we reworked this, which I honestly don't remember when that was. It's been a few months at least. And see how shriveled up the leaves are compared to say this fresh cutting that I just took before this video. Now granted, um, this is a more mature plant. This is, a, this is a smaller, more diminutive variety, but still see how the leaves are all shriveled up it's not dead, and look, it is putting out little roots. So in time, these roots will find their way into the soil, start intaking water, and this will be fine. But right now, that's what I call stressed. So that plant, you know, may or may not survive the hottest part of the summer. That may have to be removed in September. We'll see how it goes. The other little uh, Crassula argentia sunsets that I put in here are, are fairly well rooted, very stressed, but giving them a gentle tug, they're not coming out. So they've got their, they've got it going on. Um, I did pull some things from the garden in the back that are in a similar environment as the shell is out here. I have a gorgeous stand of Echeveria agavoides in the back. Some of you may remember that stone peacock that I had in the middle section where the Aluaudia procera is that is now completely covered by Crassula undulata. All you can see are its little feathers up top. And when it comes time to redo that bed, 
<sighs> dread the day, um, I will unearth the peacock for you to see. But in the meantime, I have this giant stand of these. Same situation, sun until about two in the afternoon and then it passes. So I'm gonna take the Agavoides and just soften up the soil. Oh, and this is also an opportunity for you to check and see if you might want to add a little soil to your containers. Um, sometimes it decomposes. Um, mine's, the levels are fine. I don't feel compelled to add any. Um, so I'm just gonna drop that Agavoides. You notice it still has some roots. I popped it off of the mom, roots intact. So it should do very, very well. And I'll put it right there. Then another plant that does really, really well, no matter how much sun it gets, is the Sedum adolfi. This is also called um, California sunset or firestorm. Um, so I'm gonna take the bottom leaves off of this plant so that I have a little stem. I'll put these in the propagation station. And then where, you know, I just wanna look at where do I wanna see more color pops in here and I love the idea of some color right here next to that Athona capensis. The orange against that purple is just fire, I think. Okay, then these new shiny Crassula ovata cuttings. We'll check in on this, like I said, again later in the season and we'll see how they fared. But I'm gonna put them in the back because if they do well, this is a plant that's gonna get pretty tall, so I don't wanna stick it in the front where I'll have to move it. If they do well, I'd like to leave them go for as long as possible. So I'll pop those in the back. Nice. Then another plant that does super well in my garden, no matter where I put it, is Graptivaria Fred Ives. Don't we just love Fred, you guys? And he has the potential, too, to get quite substantial. But I've got some gaps in the back here, so I'll just pop him in right there. And then I have a few more little sedums, those beautiful orange sedums. If you pick this plant up at the store and it's, it's really, really orange like this, and you get it home and it turns green, um, you know, guaranteed it's not getting enough light not enough direct sun. And this really, really enjoys drying out in between waterings too. So if you can control that, you should have success keeping your little orange sedums orange. Here's one example. I should have showed you this first. This is one I, I accidentally pulled out of here before we started shooting the video when I was adjusting my clam. And I just wanted to show you the difference. This is another example of Laura not setting it in where it had an opportunity for the roots to really meet the soil. You can see how the end has hardened off. It started to throw off roots. This tells me that it's gonna be fine. But look at the plant itself next to one that I just freshly cut. You can really see the difference in the vi vibrancy of the plant, even the color. Obviously, this one looks a lot better than this one. This, my friends, is what happens when a plant is stressed. It's going to come out of it once these roots find soil and they start in taking water. This will bounce out and be fine, or it'll die. It just depends on how hot it gets. Okay. So I'll put these in because you know me, we don't want to see any dirt. And you know what? I could keep going here. I could probably add another dozen plants in here if I wanted to. And I would if I had them handy, but I, I don't, so I'm not. Um, but now the question is, will this survive throughout the rest of July into August through September? And uh, we'll just, we'll see. I'll keep an eye on it and I'll keep you posted if I do need to move it or if anything doesn't make it. Um, we'll grieve together. In the meantime, remember this video was mostly about Athona capensis. So if you've got any Athona capensis stories to tell, please uh, let us know in the comments. 
what your experience has been or any tips that you might have about growing this plant in your specific zone. I love you all so much. And this is the favorite part of my day, sharing my thought process with all of you. So have fun out in the garden. Thank you so much for following and for liking and sharing and subscribing and joining and buying merch and doing all those fantastic things you do to keep me in groceries. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity in her garden with your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.